One that is Papa Dollar Bill, Mr. Billy Nichols, and that's from his CD called Love Stuff. Papa's theme, and you know when a man has his own theme music, he's a serious musician. Uh, we've been featuring the CD Love Stuff uh, from Billy Nichols, and he's a, a very accomplished musician, producer, writer. Uh, worked with the Motown greats Martha and the Vandellas and uh, the Spinners as well, and Marvin Gaye, and uh, so many others. The OJs back in the early days, and also the BT Express. He's been responsible for writing many of the hits with the BT Express, but most importantly today, he is a, a solo artist and uh, we welcome to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF here in Fairfield, Connecticut, Mr. Billy Nichols, Papa Dollar Bill. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing yeah. okay, Joe. Yeah, so, you know. Hey, Joe, let me say this first, you know. Okay, I, cool. I, I want to say uh, that uh, I appreciate you having me on your show, you know. I, I um, um, you know, I just appreciate you having me on, you know. I, I, what else could I say, you know? That's one yeah. thing I just want to get off. Now you can, you can ask me, you know, I just want to get that off, you know. Yeah, Thanks so. a lot. Okay, you're welcome, and, and thanks, you know, when, when musicians like yourself really appreciate that. Um, you know, going in your intro, I mean, I probably skimmed over most of your career, but just the uh, luminaries you work with in yourself, um, you know, how, how's it like uh, now with, with the, the record in these days and, and pushing an a independent release? What's been going on lately for you? Okay, well, we, uh, this, this record was uh, actually, we released it last year. And um, we did some, you know, kind of basic uh, research and, um, you know, kind of filling out what uh, uh, we played on the streets, a few places and stuff like that here in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And and we got good response from from the street crowd. So um, <clears throat> this winter has been kind of a tough winter, you know. Yeah, sure. And uh, so, like, we, we decided to um, just wait. In the meantime, I ran into uh, some uh, good people uh terms of promotion and marketing and, and uh we've been putting our heads together for a uh, um, uh, campaign for the spring and uh, summer you know coming up mm -hmm. so so listen you know our listeners can definitely tell from from your writing and everything i mean of course you, you got the the great writing in the r&b and soul and funk but you've also embraced some of the elements of what, what the youngsters are doing today uh it seems in the music how, how did how did you blend it all together uh, okay um well, back in the day, we um, kind of um, we we kind of started with, with uh, rap, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, not started it like we were in in the beginning of it, you know. Like right. we were kind of pioneering that, that era. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Super Rhymes or Count Cool Out or some of those guys. Yeah. Back when um, you know the Sugar Hill Gang and those guys were doing their thing, you know. It was like the late seventies, right? Right, late seventies, early eighties, right? Eighties mm -hmm. around that era, right? Yeah, around that time. So um, it was um, basically, you know, what you would do in those days. You just play uh, a track or, or something. Uh, what I what I basically did was play a track, you know, and just let someone rap to it. You know, mm -hmm. play some funky music and let, let someone rap to it. Basically, so that was kind of how um, you know we were doing another. It, there was some sampling going on, but it wasn't sampling. It wasn't nothing like it is now. You know. Yeah. Right. I mean, like you know, it, it, that has grown. But back in the day, we kind of played the music, you know, or we would get a beat, you know, you get a, uh, you know, had a beatbox machine, you, you know, you get an 808 or something, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. so, um, you know, speaking of the sampling, BT Express, which you, you're a great part of, uh, they've been sampled quite often, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, BT Express, yeah, that's... How does everybody feel about that? Uh, what do you mean in terms of the group? Uh, um, yeah, um, and yourself. Do you guys like that? I feel great about that because uh -huh. <laughs> they right. pay. That's right, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, they pay. I feel great about that, to tell yeah. you the truth, Joe. I, I, I really like that. All right. Um, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> one of, one of, well, uh, basically there have been a couple of songs from uh, the BT Express. The first album I wrote, uh, 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 first, I wrote uh, Do It Till You Satisfied. And that was the title of the album that came out in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And there was another song on there called If It Don't Turn You On. Right. Now, that particular song has been sampled by so many people, you know. Mm -hmm. Also do it. So those two songs have, have, have really been great, you know, and worked out great for me. I, you know, I, yeah. I ain't mad at No nobody. complaints, right? <laughs> no, I ain't Keep mad. Keep the phone ringing. <laughs> right. So, so for, for an artist, um, you know, take some, some, we got a lot of musicians listening out there. Uh, for an artist, if they want to sample somebody's, uh, music for their own record. What's the process that they have to go through? 
Okay, and then you basically you have to contact um, the publisher, uh, the administrating publisher, the one who handles the copyright for the song. Mm-hmm. You have to contact them, and from there, you know they they will tell you whatever the procedure is. You know, use it. You they cost some money, you know. Right, you right. You have to pay somebody to do this. You, you just can't take somebody's sample and, and uh, you know, without, um, first of all, without letting them know, you know. Right. And, you know, because if you get caught at this, you know, there's a big fine for it. So yeah. You don't, want, you don't want to do that. You know? <laughs> right. So the best, the good idea is to look up the administrating publisher, you know, the one who handled the song, the one who has a copyright, and uh, and talk to them, you know. And mm-hmm. the prices vary, you know, whatever, right. whatever they, you know whatever the deal is that you make with them, you know? Right. And you drop a contract, and, and you're good to go. So if our listeners just tuned in, my special guest right now is Billy Nichols, who is also known as Papa Dollar Bill, and Love Stuff is the CD we've been featuring here on The Upper Room. And uh, let me give uh, his website. It's P-A-P-D-O-L-L-A-B-I-L-L.com. And uh, the CD is also available through CDBaby.com. And you can go up there and, and check out uh, some great pictures from from Billy and uh, some of the greats that you work with through the years and get the CD, most importantly, Love Stuff. And You, you know, your, your uh, background with music, um, you started, you, you grew up in the South, right? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I grew up in the South. How did you get turned on to music and, and what, what kind of instruments were you <clears throat> playing in the beginning? Okay, now, um, well, how I got turned on was through my dad. My dad was a blues musician. Uh-huh. And uh, he played and sang the blues. And as a, as a little kid, I just you know used to sit and listen to him, you know, uh, play. And um, I came from a large family. I had eight siblings, you know, so there was a bunch of us around. And uh, my dad kind of taught it, taught everybody how to play. You know, mm-hmm. when it got down to me, I was number seven in the group. So uh-huh. when it got down to me, it was <laughs> he had got to burn himself out and teaching people how to right. play. You know? So I. I had to kind of get it the hard way, you know. I was kind of listening to, but I, but I did enjoy, you know, listening to him and 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 paying attention to what he was doing. And as I grew older, um, I began to, um, uh, you know, uh, pick up the, the guitar, which he played guitar, and he played like the Delta Blues and uh, you know, a la John Lee Hooker uh, or some like Lightning Hopkins and Muddy Waters type music, you know. Mm-hmm. He played that kind of music and sang. So. Um, that was my first introduction to, you know, music kind of like. And then um, later, I, I, as I listened to radio when I got older, you know, nine or ten years old, I was listening to uh, gospel, you know, uh, uh, the gospel groups and and country and western music. You know, uh, basic, so basically, those three types of music was uh, my influence. You know, uh, that's when you were down in Mississippi, right? Yeah, that's yeah. when I was down in Mississippi. I was born uh, in a town called Carrollton, Mississippi. Okay. Do you get a chance to visit back? Not uh, if I can help it. <laughs> oh, what are those? No, I don't go back down there anymore. <laughs> oh, man. that's a classic. Right there. No, you know, like it's not that I got anything against it. You know, I got a few of uh, uh, family down there, not that many, but I don't really get down there too often. You know, uh, every now and then we talk. Um, I basically lost contact because my mom and my, and my dad, we kind of migrated up here. Mm-hmm. You know, and. Um, we left there, and uh, everybody was up here. All everybody, all of my immediate family, brothers and sisters, and so on. You know, so the only people that were left down there, you know, were uh, uncles or uh, great aunts, and you know, people like that. You know, so it wasn't the immediate close family. So we kind of stayed up here. Matter of fact, we moved up to Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, well, which brought you up there? Well, so economics. You know, right. uh-huh. economics. We came up here seeking a better. Um, a better uh, lifestyle from where we had previously lived, you know, mm-hmm. living out there on a the farm. Well, we lived on a farm, you know, and right. that was that was tough, you know. So, uh, so then you became affiliated uh, out in Detroit with uh, working right right in the middle of some some incredible music and history. How how did you first enter into the Detroit Motown scene? Okay, uh, <clears throat> in the early '60s, after I graduated high school, I um, started playing gospel and. Um, I was playing bass at that time, uh, and um, this um, my, I had an uncle, my mother's brother, who lived in Detroit. And uh, after a while, uh, I, w- I was also working a nine-to-five job. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day, uh, a friend of mine who was playing in a um, an R&B band, he, he decided to quit the band, and he 
called on me to join, you know, to, to take his place, you know what I mean? Right. So uh, that's how I kind of got onto that side of it. So after I took his place and I played for a while around Hartford and Springfield, local areas, you know, we played around. And uh, the, um, uh, I just got disenchanted. And I told my mom if, if, if she if she would contact my uncle out in Detroit, that I'd love to, you know, go out there. I was just got disenchanted with just playing local gigs, you know. Matter of fact, with the band I joined at that time, we did record a record. It was called the band was called Jimmy Vic and the Victors. Okay. And um, in the early '60s, we had um, uh, we did um, <laughs> we did two sides. We got our, I got our pictures in uh, um, uh, uh, what, what was the cash box at that time? That cash box, right? Uh, that billboard too. But I think we were in cash box. I think. Okay. Yeah, this was the early '60s, around '63, something like that. And um, you know that that was a little while, a little something. You know, we uh, locals and stuff. You know, you had your friends and stuff. You know, around Boston and areas around Springfield and Hartford and that area. You know, but they kind of played out. You know, right. <laughs> so, then you headed for the big time out in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, I headed for Detroit. Right. I didn't know how much big time it was going to be, but that's where I headed I, to stay with my uncle out there. And after I was out there for um, uh, a couple of months, I joined up with. Um, I started going to clubs. You know, and and. Um, in Detroit and and ran into musicians, you know, different musicians out there. And one bass player I ran into named Tony, and he we started living together. Mm -hmm. And um, he he was a great bass player. And at that time I was playing the guitar, and um, I switched the guitar because I wanted to kind of write songs, you know, and I needed some kind of chord instrument. That was uh, my reason for doing that. Well, anyway, um, Tony. Um, um, managed to get an audition at Motown. Uh, through, uh, um, let's see, I think it was... Uh, he managed to get an audition through the Spanners or somebody like that, somebody mm -hmm. he had met. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we went over there, and the uh, first day we were there, and they auditioned us. They took us down in, you know, Hitsville. We went to Hitsville on, on West Grand Boulevard there, and they took us down into the recording studio where they recorded all the hits, you know. Right. And we... Uh, uh, audition and Tony and I was hired on the spot. Tony was hired um, and he played for the Miracles for about uh, five or six years or more. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, I was hired to play for the um, um, Martin Vandellas. Right. I got a gig with them right away. And I played. And you, with, mm -hmm. you were leading the band, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was leading the band. I was hired as their uh, musical director and everything. Right. You know. At the same time, which, which I, I must say, I got fired from that job. <laughs> I didn't last too long, but my experience wasn't that great. <laughs> hey, he's but, an honest musician. Hey, look, I'm telling it like it is, you know right. what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I feel it's all good. I'm not, right. you know, I, I'm not trying to dodge any bullets here. I, right. Because, I, you know, I did, um, you know, I, I'm I'm happy at where I am. You know, I I, I did okay. Right. Uh, from there, I went to the Marblettes, and I played with them for a little while. And... Um, uh, I met the Spinners, and during that time, um, they didn't have a lot of hits, but they had one song called "That's What Girls Are Made For," mm -hmm. and um, uh, that was they. They used to, you know, they did gigs, and, and um, so I got friendly with those guys, and through them, I met Marvin Gaye through the Spinners. Right. Okay. And that's when. Um, um, you know, the, that's when I got the job with him. By that time, I gained experience on how to conduct a band and, and so forth. And uh, uh, they auditioned me. You know, uh, one day they uh, called me up um, and, and asked me to come to down to uh, uh, Motown. And when I got there, Marvin Gaye was in the room and um, Barry Gordy. And um, so you did a, a bunch of tours with Marvin. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. I toured with him for. Um, well, I guess about um, about seven months. Mm -hmm. About seven months, yeah. But those days, you guys were working almost around the clock, right? Well, not really, because Marvin, um, Marvin, um, well, I, you know, I, I think Marvin was kind of lazy in a way, you know. He didn't <laughs> <laughs> like to do, and now that I look back at it, he really didn't have to, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> because he wrote so many hits, and he, you know, he... He was such a big artist, you know. He didn't have to work that regularly, you right. know. And so, um, but um, I, I, yeah, we did. Matter of fact, the last uh, 
five months I worked with him. It was steady work, you know. Mm-hmm. Every week we were doing something, you know. Uh, but before then, it was kind of sporadic. But uh, this was during the time he had How Sweet It Is and um, I'm a Dog Gold, you know. So That's you play right. guitar in that band? Uh, no, I didn't play it in the session. I just okay. did the road, road thing. Okay. We did some live recordings. I don't know what happened to them, but right. you know, I, I, I don't know what they did with that. Someone's got them. <laughs> Someone's got them. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I know they hooked us up for it. <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, why don't we get into uh, some more music from Billy Nichols, Papa Dollar Bill, and hey. uh, this Love Stuff, the CD, and uh, how about we go with Chocolate Chips? Oh, and, man. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice one. We're even going to play the intro to this song. Okay. And... Uh, how, how, how'd you uh, compose this one and work in the studio? Okay, uh, chocolate chip. Okay, well, well here at, at my home, I have a, 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 some, you, you know, like some basic equipment, like, you know, a, a music program, my computer and all that. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's what I, I did this with the music um, program and from, uh, you know, just the, the, uh, uh, the pre-work I did here at the house, and then I went to the studio and recorded it. Right. Basically, that, that's how I did it, you know, so the chocolate chip thing, yeah. Here's a great uh, legend in music who's writing great songs, uh, writing, producing, doing it all, Billy Nichols, and we'll get into it right now. This is called Chocolate. His name is Papa Dollar Bill. Billy Nichols right there with chocolate chips from Love Stuff, and we want to thank him once again for coming by here on The Upper Room. Yeah, so... So, uh, you know, you've got, we were talking off air about stockpiling all these songs that you've written. I mean, you've written some huge hits uh, yourself. What, what's it like writing for your own material, the album's going to be your, yourself? Do you, do you write any differently? or? Yeah, well, I, I kind of started to write, you know, for, for the art, or some of the artists that I've written for before, you know. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, some of the songs are kind of, Sent out there to to uh, you know the, to get some feedback in terms of whether or not they would want to do some of these songs, you know. And um, I guess you know the artists kind of move on, you know, once they become stars and stuff like that. It's uh, some of them like to write their own material, and some of them go elsewhere and whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, anyway, I, I just decided to. Um, to answer your question, not really. You know, I, I kind of, I kind of wrote it the, the way that I probably would write for any other, any anybody else. I, it's not really tailor made for me, you know. Right, right. Because when I when I presented the songs to other people, I would always, um, you know, put it down myself, you know, and and they would sing it. Most of the time, they sing it basically like I did it, you know, basically, you know. So, so we see that uh, you've written every song on it, but uh, you have some co-writing credits. Uh, J Minor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how would you get involved with other writers and uh, well Jane Minor is uh was I was telling you before about uh some of the rappers uh that I work with. Okay. He was one of the rappers. He okay. called himself Count Cool Out. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a cool name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Count Cool Out, so um I had recorded him back in uh early eighties and um and we're still in contact with each other. And uh as a matter of fact he at this particular time has started his own record label and um you know he's doing some work himself you know now uh, i spoke to him but anyway the um, the song that um matter of fact when i did um uh, my renee and i let him hear it then he was um you know he really loved that song you know he said hey billy i like this you know i want to do something with it you know and so we we decided to to do a couple of things you know together so um, uh, he got involved with chocolate chips and um, uh, the, um, Papa's theme, you know. So that's how it basically came about. Yeah. And and your CD, uh, you know, you you've been in the studio working uh, real hard, writing and producing. And uh, how how about to get some inspiration uh, other than your own music? Do you, do you listen to a lot of other artists and what what's been gripping your mind and, and giving you inspiration? As of late, mm, okay. As of late, well, you know, I, I basically I listen to. Um, um, well, I can't say that I listen to a lot of radio because uh, so somehow or another radio kind of turned me off in a way where you, they play the same songs oh, over yeah. and over. You know, I mean, right. like you can listen to radio once a month and you get everything that's new. You know, that's right. because they play the same stuff over and over. You know, yeah. I, I do listen to. Um, um, I, I turn. Uh, I, I sometimes I listen to. You know. Uh, 
a variety of stuff. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, basically, not the radio so much, but some of the stuff on TV, you know, like MTV sometimes, mm -hmm. BET sometimes, you know, VH1. I, I listen, you know, I kind of turn the channel, you know. I'm one of those kind of people, but I listen to, you know, I, I, hear, I hear the new stuff, and I get the billboard, and I look at the stuff that's uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of inspiration, you know, like um, I might hear something that inspires me, particularly in the beats, you know what I mean? Right. Like, right. Uh, um, I, 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 you know, hey, I like dance music, personally. That's that's my favorite, you know, right. like dance music. Uh, but um, I also could hear a lyric maybe in a love song or something like that that really, um, you know... Um, touch me or something like that you know and, oh go ahead yeah and I, I, my antennas are constantly up you know for right. whatever you know i hear i could you know whatever it picks up you know. well, well speaking of music of a, a little different tempo uh i thought we'd drop uh never get enough hey. of falling in love with you another song written by my special guest billy nichols papa dollar bill when, when did you get the nickname papa dollar bill uh, that came about in the early 90s okay yeah yeah um uh, well, Dollar Bill was uh, when I used to play basketball. It, it was kind of like um, uh, I had this this shot from the corner, you know. Bill Bradley, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, Bill Bradley. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Dollar Bill, right? They used to call me Dollar Bill because every time they give me the ball in the corner, hey, it was money. <laughs> right. you, did you play down in uh, West Third, West Fourth, down there? Uh, I played. Course? I played at West Fourth. Yeah, I played down there with with a couple of the guys. Yeah, right. I played there a few times. But yeah. we used to play up here at. Um, uh, at the park over here at Riverside Park. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a nice park there. Yeah. Yeah, we played there a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so we'll give our listeners uh, uh, a time to check this one out. Another great uh, song from Love Stuff from Mr. Billy Nichols, Papa Dollar Bill, That's Never Get Enough of Loving You, and uh, takes takes you back to those 70s uh, R&B days. At least it does for me. How about yourself? Is, was that the intention? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was it. Matter of fact, I wrote this song in, um, well, I wrote it, <laughs> actually, I wrote it in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I wrote it back then, and um, we um, we released it, and um, we got some play on it, you know, but um, it wasn't really pushed or anything, you know. So when I decided to do this CD, um, uh, what, what, <laughs> what inspired me to put it on this CD was... Um, my nephew came here once, and he was listening to some of my old music and stuff, and he was saying, wow, I love this song, you know? <laughs> you know, he never heard it, you know? So uh, I said, hey, you know what? I, I think I'm going to put this song on, on the new CD, you know? Hey, it mm -hmm. works right there after after the opening workout we got with a couple first songs and then mm -hmm. slow the things down. I think, it, I think it's great the way you seg the songs. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should uh, I should say you know like uh, I got to give Count you know his props on this because he helped me with that you know Count right. Kulau. Count Kulau, that's right. You collaborator yeah. and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He now, helped me with that. Mm -hmm. Now, now we were talking off air about the R and B radio really going heavily into uh, you know hip hop and, mm -hmm. and and like that and you know you you were involved in the 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 sixties and seventies and, and the eighties with you know great R and B bands and, and soul. Um, how, how about, I mean, we know what you've been doing, uh, lately, but how about a lot of your people, you, you grew up playing, do you keep in contact with them and, and what has happened with things changing so much in the biz? Uh, um, do I keep in touch with the, whom, the people who are like, for, like for instance, the BT Express and yes. The, yeah, uh -huh. yes, I keep in touch with BT Express. Um, <clears throat> I matter of fact, I spoke to, um, the bass player, the one that's saying, on do it, do it to yourself, I know whatever it is, that right. one. <laughs> Oh, right, right. <laughs> I spoke to him um, uh, recently. We were talking because every year he gives a Super Bowl uh, party, like at his place. You know? Okay. And he invites everyone to come out, you know, and uh, particularly some of the musicians and people like that. Also, Millie Jackson. I, I wrote a, a song for her in the early '70s called "Ask Me What You Want." You know. Right. And um, I'm in touch with her as well. As a matter of fact, she. Uh, we were talking recently. She sent me a picture autograph picture of her because she's constantly working and doing things you know do do the artists that uh you know you collaborate during those times find it difficult to maneuver in, in the way things are today because i always wonder you know people i grew up listening to you know what happened and what are they doing mm -hmm. well in terms of millie jackson she told me uh, millie stays pretty busy uh -huh. you know she 
she works uh, she works out in Vegas and different places, you know. Right. So she's she's doing great, you know. She she probably have to turn down work. And I think she she's doing also a radio show. So, oh, okay. Yeah, she she told me she's in, she's um based in Atlanta, Georgia, and um she has a station that she does that uh, she she has a show that 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 uh, um runs in Texas or something she told me, something like that. But um in terms of BT Express, now I don't really know how much that they're working cuz when I spoke uh last with uh Jamal, he was telling me that um they're working basically sporadically, you know. They're not doing a lot of work. I'm, you know, I, I don't know because I, I, it just seemed to me that, you know, with the, the track record that they had, you know, mm -hmm. that they would be kind of busy. Uh, how did you guys form the band? Okay, BT Express. I that that group was um, of they were called a King Davis and the House Rockers mm -hmm. <laughs> at mm -hmm. one time. So. Um, uh, of what happened in that case, um, uh, in the early seven, I also did a Broadway show. I was uh, um, played in a Broadway show. I played music, you know, in a band. Right, right. And um, they hired a, a bass player, uh, Jamal. He was the one, and 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 we used to we started hanging out together. You know, mm -hmm. we just started kicking it and hanging out. He would come up my house in between the, the shows and whatever, you know. And so when the show closed on Broadway, it was called Two Gentlemen of Verona, by the way. Uh, and uh, when that show closed, um, a few months later, he knew that I wrote, wrote songs because I had written a hit for Miller Jackson. That asked me what you want while we were doing that show. Mm -hmm. So he came to me and said, "Billy, so you got anything, you know, for a group? You know, so we want, you know, for his group. You know, I wasn't in his group personally. You understand? Right, right. I was in another group called Invaders. Uh, um, anyway, um, I had written Do It Till You Satisfied." And I had it, and I said, "Yeah," because matter of fact, I had taken it around to a couple of places, and 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 um, you know, got turned down really. Basically. <laughs> Shame <laughs> on them! <laughs> said, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> so I said, "Okay." I was kind of disenchanted at the time. I was so disenchanted. Let me tell you what I did, Joe. Uh huh. You know, do it to yourself. I don't know. You know the song; it has words in it. Oh know? yeah, yeah. I had taken all the words out and just used the hook. Do it. Do it to you satisfied. Whatever it is that I. I was. I thought that the words were no good. You know what I mean. Uh huh. So anyway, when Jamal called me and he said, "Okay, Bill, let me hear what you got," you know. So he came over, and I played it for him. He flipped out, man. He said, "Hey, man, that's a great song," you know. He said, "Do you have any more words?" You know. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, I have the words right here." Right. I said, but I don't know if they're any good. You know, everybody been turning me down. You know. <laughs> and he said, "I love them." And so we sang it down right here at my house. Put all the parts down. And because uh, I had all the tracks, you know, made up, and uh, he took it to the group, and they called me, you know, and uh, they loved it, you know, so they recorded it. And um, after that, basically, um, they 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 had a little problem selling it at first too, you know. They weren't signed to a label, you know what I mean? Right. They recorded it like independently, mm -hmm. and then uh, I understand that. Um, they were remixing it in the studio, and uh, this guy from uh, Scepter Record heard it. He was in there remixing some of his material, and he heard it do it. <laughs> he said, hey, I think I want that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so from there, you know, that, that kind of took off. Yeah, I, I got the vinyl here with, uh, actually, it's the Canadian release of it. Um, oh, yeah. My, my wife's from Canada, uh, okay. Montreal, so I got her version of it. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's 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 the difference? What's what's? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's got it's got the open fold with the whole band on on the platform there. So I guess right. that, that's not too much different, right? No. Maybe just at the bottom it says manufactured and distributed up in uh, Quebec. That's a, oh, maybe okay. that's about it. Up in Quebec, but yeah. yeah, when you come here, I'll bring it over here and see if you know any difference. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah. You know, you wrote the song on there and uh, yeah. many songs with greats. And uh, my yeah. special guest has been Papa Dollar Bill, Mr. Billy Nichols, based out of New York City. And, uh, you know, I got to thank you so much for the, for the new music, Love Stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, and, uh, great. Also, you know, I, I got to one more time give our listeners uh, the places to check out your music and order your music. Papa mm -hmm. Dollar Bill. Uh, P A P A D O L L A B I L L dot com and also CDBaby dot com. And, uh, you know, thanks to keep right. the real music alive for us. Love stuff, title of the CD. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Love stuff. Can't forget <laughs> a great picture of you up there. Uh, 
Natalie attire, great suit there. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, thanks, man. So, hey, how about we go with uh, something real funky? Well, actually, we'll go with a couple. We'll go with uh, uh, Do It To You're Satisfied, written by uh, Billy Nichols, BT Express. Yeah. And uh, go right into the current day Billy Nichols, 2004 style jump. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that track. Yeah, great. So, <laughs> yeah, we got to have you up to the studio. Hey, I'd love to come. Love yeah. To come, yeah. So thanks, Billy. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay.